Hello, everybody. Uh, so we are officially going to begin our next artist uh, in my little musical timeline here. And that artist is Typo Negative, uh, which uh, to this day is one of my favorite bands. Um, unfortunately, uh, lead singer, um, you know, front man, bassist, uh, Pete Steele uh, died in 2010, I think. Uh, I do remember I was in high school, uh, but I don't think it was in my final year of high school, so I think it was 2010. Um, and uh, that, that fucked me up, by the way. I was so upset when I heard that, because they were in the midst of making a new album, I think. And I think he was even going to make a new album with his other band, uh, Carnivore. So I was like, oh my god, you know, this is awesome. Uh, and, and, and then he fucking died, and, and that just really hit me really hard. Um, uh, you, you know, because he, he really uh, has just like this one-of-a-kind voice. Um, and, and if you've heard typo-negative music, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway... Uh, the, uh, the the first album that we're going to be talking about here is, of course, their 1991 debut, Slow, Deep, and Hard, which is the odd one out in their discography, for sure. It, uh, it, it, it is um, somewhat tied to his previous band's style. Like, not exactly. They don't sound the same. But you can see, like... You know, they, they still hadn't fully gotten to what Typo Negative would, would be uh, with this first album. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's got a very different feel. Like, it's the kind of thing where if you got into them and didn't know that this album existed and then you went back and listened to this one, you might be confused <laughs> and you might not uh, like it. And I don't like it for the reasons that I like the rest of their music, but I do still like it. I think it's an interesting album. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because, uh, so I'm looking at the remaster version, which has an extra song, but if we're going to ignore that one and just look at it in its original presentation, there's what, uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's five songs on this album because, um, I don't count two of these tracks <clears throat> as being like, you know, typo negative songs. Um, but you still end up with a, a, a pretty big amount of music because, uh, the songs are all long, uh, and, and Typo Negative is pretty good at that. Um, I, I know I've, I've made comments about the length of songs when I've talked about some of these other artists in this video series. Um, but it, it, it's not that I don't like long songs, and, and I think I mentioned this before, that uh, a, a good example of, of that being the case is that um, I think if it's not my outright favorite King Gizzard song, um, my one of my favorite King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard songs is uh, The Dripping Tap, which is almost 20 minutes long. Um, it's just a fucking awesome <laughs> song. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem with longer music. Uh, it just depends on the artist and, and how well they can pull it off. Um, and, and in my opinion, there are some songs that are just like too long for what they are or what they, you know, do. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, typo negative are like masters of doing long songs that I like. Uh, and, and this album, like the shortest song, uh, is fucking like seven minutes and 46 seconds, uh, which is pretty long. You know, for, for like, average uh, listeners. Um, but yeah, uh, we've, we've, again, we've got a sound here that is not, it's not quite carnivore and it's not quite typo negative, uh, like, in terms of what they sounded like after this. Um, and I prefer their later albums, for the most part. Uh, but again, this one's still pretty damn good. It's, um, it's got a lot of anger in it, uh, and it's, it's also got some, like, um, uh, I think maybe a little bit of dark humor for sure, uh, but, um, 
yeah, musically, there's some really wonderful sounding things on this. And uh, one thing that's really cool, by the way, um, is uh, there. there's some things that I, I guess they hadn't quite, um, you know... Uh, thought of when they when they you know did the uh, all all the album versions of these songs um so there's little ways that they they switched it up for uh live performances and um i i just found out because my my favorite uh version of the song um zero tolerance um is on um is on the uh spotify release of dead again which it didn't used to be but they they expanded that track list with a bunch of like live versions of songs and i was very excited to find that out and i didn't know that until i revisited all these albums um because uh you know uh, when they when they first brought it to spotify which was somewhat recently because for a long time i think there was something uh you know with with like recording company stuff whatever um but uh yeah when when it when it first hit spotify that wasn't the case so uh, i you know i liked all the songs and and then you know whatever i didn't have to like open the album again uh until recently and then and then i was like oh my god <laughs> my favorite version of a song off of their first album which is the Wacken 2007 performance is on spotify and um it's the same thing with uh, Gravitational Constant, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say the whole name because uh, it's an equation. Um, but uh, it's often shortened to just gravity. But um, so, so for the uh, live versions of gravity, they change the way they say the word gravity in, in like the chorus. Because um, in the, uh, the album version, which is still uh, really great, but in the album version... It's slower. It's like gravity, and then in the live version, it's like gravity. Dun, 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 dun. You know, like it's it just sounds like I don't know. It sounds better in in my opinion. I could see people preferring it the other way, maybe. But um, oh, of course, uh, in the case of the live version of Gravity, they cut out my favorite part of the song, which is the end, uh, like two minutes of the song. Um, so you know. <laughs> it's 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 one of those things where it's like damn i wish i could have the perfect recording of the song with the parts that i most enjoy um which uh you know whatever anyway yeah i just kind of got talking about a whole bunch of shit there um so let's, let's talk about my top three here which i wrote down somewhere i think i put them over here um which i i preemptively i'm not doing this for for, for this artist i'm not listening to each album and then recording my thoughts like one after another um because for one thing i'm so familiar with all of these albums i don't even really need to re-listen to these um but i mean i still will but i'm not doing it the same format because like i said i know these albums so well um so i i i preemptively picked out all my um my top threes already so we're all set on that. Um, <clears throat> so my number three pick for Slow, Deep, and Hard is going to be uh, the first track, Unsuccessfully Coping with the Natural Beauty of Infidelity, which is alternatively known as I Know You're Fucking Someone Else. <laughs> um, it is 12 and a half minutes, and it is a journey. Um, and, and and one of the things that I love about some of these songs on this album is is it's not the same thing for the whole twelve minutes. They know how to like have it in sections where where you know there's a different sound for each part basically, um, and uh, definitely um, the song picks up for me after a certain portion, but I still I still really like the whole song. Um, and it's got just like some, some really just like raw, possibly relatable, depending on your life circumstances, uh, energy, which actually I've never had to relate to the lyrics of this song, but I understand the emotions, of course. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a good song. Um, it's, it's got a great, uh, th like, like, back half for me. 
Um, not to say that I don't enjoy the first half, once again, but anyway. Um, so my number two pick is going to be Zero Tolerance, um, which uh, is alternatively known as uh, Kill You Tonight. Um, I do prefer other versions of this song, as I mentioned, like the uh, the Wacken 2007 live performance, which is on the Dead Again uh, track list on Spotify. Um, I just really like that performance of that song. Um, but this is this is good too, and you know, obviously, I can't include um, alternative versions of a song as my reason for picking my top three necessarily, but. Uh, I do want to mention that, that, like, this made my number two slot on this album, but I do prefer the live versions, typically. Um, even, even, uh, e even the fake live version of the, um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, fake live album, The Origin of the Feces, which they made sort of spitefully out of obligation to a contract, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um... <clears throat> So yeah, I think uh, my, my number one pick is pretty straightforward. I've just really loved this song ever since I heard it uh, for the first time. Uh, and it's going to be gravitational constant, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's you know, it's the equation or whatever. Um, often shortened to gravity, um, which actually, uh, it's, it's, it's annoying. Because again, I would love to have my perfect, like combined versions of of this song because i really do love the album version for like the last like i want to say like two or three minutes of the song which that part is not included when they play it live or played you know because um, of course they're not a band anymore but um uh the the the, the inverse to that though is that um they they would lead into it with what is technically a separate song, I guess, but it it, it, it seamlessly crosses into uh, this song. Um, but uh, it's called "Are You Afraid?" And uh, you know they they use that to lead into gravitational constant. And um, that is it's like two minutes, you know, it's it's like a short addition to the beginning. Uh, but that's awesome too. So it's like I wish I had that. The song, uh, as performed live, typically, with the change up to how the the chorus is sung, and then also if I could have the last two minutes of the album version, like if I could just have it all <laughs> perfectly done, that would have been like amazing. But um, as it stands, the album version is great, and there's also um, a really good live performance once again on the Dead Again uh, track listing on Spotify, which I can't remember what. Uh, like, um, you know, live tour that was part of or whatever. But um, that one's really great. Um, and I, I really like that one, too. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, that's my top three. Um, and even though that's most of the songs on the album, uh, I will give honorable mentions to the other songs that I, you know, couldn't pick. Uh, which, in this case, it's uh, Prelude to Agony, which is um, a 12-minute epic of just like angriness <laughs> um it's pretty good uh and it has some really lovely sounding um music uh and uh and then the other track being uh der untermensch which i don't know how much of that is a serious expression of the band's beliefs or pete's beliefs or whatever because i feel like there's something to be said about maybe like i don't necessarily agree with all the lyrics in that case but um it is uh it's still a pretty enjoyable song um and that's the thing is like you know i i have nuance <laughs> okay i can i can recognize um flaws in something uh and that that doesn't mean i have to hate it or or you know whatever so um, you know, some, sometimes I might have conflicting opinions on something, and, and Der, Der, Der Untermensch is, like, a little bit that way. Um, but for the most part, yeah, this is a pretty interesting album. It's stylistically very different than the albums that come after, especially the very next one. Um, 
which is uh, Bloody Kisses, and that's what we'll talk about next time. So uh, I know this was a bit of a longer one, but um, I don't know. I got off on a rant somewhere, and I already forgot what it was about. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. I do appreciate that to anyone who watches these, and I'll see you guys when I talk about uh, Bloody Kisses, and that'll be the next video. So see you guys next time.